So I really think it's time that us cyclists stop bickering about little details and trying to really get behind the future of the sport because the benefits of that are going to outweigh trying to hang on to remnants of the past. Of course, I'm talking about things like rim brakes, external cable routing, hyperglide cassettes, post mount, all those sort of things. And I want to cover that today because one of the problems I really see that's sort of preventing us getting to like where we want to be is clinging on to the problem the manufacturers have with their stock keeping units. So SKUs is something that we use sort of in retailing terms. And it refers to just how many products that you have to hold in inventory. Now take, for example, a, a caliper brake. Now this is an Altegra one, it's quite old, but it illustrates the point. Now, if you can imagine that for all the different iterations of this, you've got single pivot, you've also got two pivots, you've also got uh, a low drop and a high drop. Um, and then you've got all the different sort of spec levels in there as well. You've got Sora, Claris, Tiagra, 105, Ortegra, Dura Ace, that's just in Shimano. That is a lot of products to hold in stock for a technology that is slowly dying. And this is really like the burden, if you like, about trying to make progress with disc brakes. And I've got to be encouraged by the progress that we are making with disc brakes because like here are two levers. You know, this one here is a rim brake and this one here is a disc brake. And look how far they've come. Yes, the disc brake one is still bigger, but I have to say the ergonomics on the disc brake one is so much better and they're so much different as well. You can really lean on these, get out of the saddle and really lean into them. These ones now are almost feeling quite floppy and fragile and you know, I'm, it's not seen an awful lot of development in these. I mean, just imagine what these, these disc brake ones, where they've come from, from those big, bulbous, too long sort of units and where we are now. And just imagine where this is gonna to get to in the future if we really, really got behind that technology. Yes, there's a few things that need to change. Um, and I think a few of the brands are getting there. One of the things is having to be easily connected and disconnected and SRAM are making some headway with that with their Stealth and Majig connection. It's not perfect yet, but I think if we got behind this technology and we asked for that as consumers, we would, that would improve quite rapidly. Like another thing is hubs. Like right now, there are way too many hub configurations. So we have, we're still gonna do to rim brakes, we still have that 130, 135 millimeter quick release. We then have 142, 148, 157 for downhill. We have six bolt and center lock. We have hyperglide um, free hubs, but we also have SRAM XD, SRAM XDR, um, Shimano, Microspline and Campagnolo. I think if we can really try and get behind just one of those technologies, then that would be a massive, massive advantage. And personally, I'd like that to be the Shimano Microspline system because the stock holding units on it, even like a DT Swiss hub, is insane if you think about it. Even though they tried to be intelligent about it with having different end cap solutions and um, disc brake adapters, I think if we could just try and get behind something, it would really help bring prices down and accelerate innovation. Now, another thing that's really does my head in with rim brakes is um, the wheel technology because when we can get rid of the rim brake, we can really start to be really innovative with our wheels. And we're starting to see that from Zip and Fast Forward and all the wheel brands and how they're developing the aerodynamics because they don't have to worry about a braking surface. Now, to illustrate that point, I've actually got Jake's uh, giant TCR <laughs> behind us. And this is a great point. So I've got his wheel here. And this bike isn't actually that old. In fact, he hasn't actually changed the brake pads yet, but the rim surface of this is already a half a millimeter worn. And if you're wondering how I measure it, most bike shops that have something like this, it's called like a, it's a dentistry tool for measuring and it gets around the little lip. And you can put this on the inside. Now at its thickest point, this measured two millimeters. And now at its thinnest point, we're seeing the most wear, it's already down to 1.5. So he's wearing out his rims faster than he's wearing out his brake pads. <laughs> That's that's an insane situation to be in when carbon rims are one, not recyclable and two, really, really expensive. So why would, why would you do that? The other thing is from where we live, we have quite a lot of big hills and rim brakes on 
really big hills of carbon, we've seen a lot where the resin has got too hot and melted a little bit and the pressure of the tire has just blown it off and you've just got this completely warped rim as well. It's quite terrifying. I don't think just sticking with alloy wheels is the answer either because we're all appreciating going wider um, and lower profile or much deeper profile with our rims as well. So like wheel rim technology has moved on to a point where it's almost overtaken what the rim brake caliper can actually do. So yeah, there's my rant. I just think, come on, can we just put this to one side, give Shimano, SRAM, Campagnolo a bit of headway, just sort your disc brakes out. And if you are gonna sort your disc brakes out, you know, what would we like to see? Well, well, we've already talked about that easy connect and disconnect, much easier bleeding processes, which are honestly, every single time they come out of the model, the bleeding process is getting easier and easier and smoother. It's so much, so much better. I'd like to see an end of dot 5.1 fluid. I don't see any reason why we just can't embrace uh, mineral oil. But also like the internal cable routine, you know, I'd like to see the frame manufacturers just fully embrace the fact that it's going to have disc brakes on it and come up with a really good way of internally routing that cable without it rattling or needing extra vibration control. I'm sure it can be done if we really, really got behind that technology. Other things I think that could really, really help it is to just get rid of 140 millimeter rotors. I don't think they're serving any great purpose at the moment. They overheat, they warp. They're not a great size to have on your bike. I think we should just get behind 160 for road. And that would make things so much easier for like neutral service cars on races and race support and, you know, even big sportive. If we can just get behind, you know, 142 millimeters, 160 millimeter rotor, <laughs> Shimano micro spline free hub, oh, it make things so much easier. I don't think we need six bolt either. Six bolt has got its problems. It's um, the discs warp, they can, bolts easily fall off and shear. I think the center lock system of attaching your rotor is just so much better. So why are we trying to maintain two systems still? It doesn't make any sense. And then the whole flat mount thing, I think we've pretty much got to the point where flat mount on road bikes is being pretty accepted. We, every now and then we get a post mount sort of gravelly frame which sort of blurs and we have this like awkward situation whereas post mount on mountain bikes seems to be um, we're forging ahead with that so the quicker we can get to that sort of consistency and give the brands half a chance of just developing good products within a range of specifications i think we'll see much better innovation that we all want you know i i i really do and then on the whole internal cable routing thing I think we're at the point where it's, we know that internal cable routing bikes sell better. Um, we know that deep down inside, we all like the aesthetics of the internal cable routing. And some of us are frustrated with the time it takes to potentially build the bike in the first place or the possibility of having to repair it in the field. But I think they can be overcome. If the frame manufacturers really put their mind to it, it shouldn't be that hard. In fact, we're already seeing in internal cable routing get easier and easier and easier. Like the insides of the carbon frames are getting cleaner, so they actually do run through easier. Sometimes we're actually seeing carbon frames with actual channels built in as well. And I think when we get to that point where we've kind of agreed as to what sort of cables we want in our bike, the frame manufacturers will have to focus and try and come up with solutions that you know, help that cable routing even better and even help cable manage, you know, the whole DI2. The fact that we still have DI2 cables and junction boxes sort of still randomly floating around um, is crazy. But then some of the bikes that I've seen recently with the new DI2 have had fantastic solutions of holding the battery in a certain place where you can actually get in and just quickly change the battery without, you know, <laughs> too much faff. So it is happening. I think the quicker we can all just get behind it, I think it'll happen faster, I really do. Um, <laughs> while, we're on the, while we're on the subject of frames, bottom brackets, um, I really see that we're almost at the end of the press fit era. <laughs> it feels like when we start seeing a bike launch now, we are starting to see the end of that. I mean, the Cannondale Synapse is a great example because Cannondale have been BB30 press fit forever and the fact that that Synapse now comes to the British standard bottom bracket is 
mind blowing. And I think we're seeing a return to that across all the big brands, you know, Trek, etc., all doing a similar thing, coming coming back to a threaded solution. Um, and the, the BSA bottom bracket does seem to be like the accepted one. Although I understand that there are still some times when you want a bit more frame material to play with with some of the shapes that you want to create around your bottom bracket area. And for that, I still think that the Chris King T47 or possibly the Pressfit 30 system still needs to probably exist for some for some innovation to happen around that part of the frame. But that's only three standards, whereas what we have now is just insane. And as a result, um, bike shops around the world are struggling to know what bottom brackets to keep in stock. It's, it's insanely difficult to try and predict what bike's gonna come through the door and what it might need because there are, I haven't counted them, but there must be hundreds, hundreds of different bottom brackets, especially when you think about, you know, all the square taper and all the stuff that goes in the past as well. So yeah, that's, um, <laughs> that's my rant. Tell me, um, tell me what you think. One thing I love about this whole, let's just make cycling content and talk bikes while the World Cup is on, is that you guys get so fired up in the comments um, and actually yesterday's video was a great example when we talked about that look and actually I got in contact with look and got a slightly updated um, geometry chart from them as well. I might post that somewhere for you, but their, their website is in the process of being updated. Um, yeah, well done, the observant ones amongst you for, for, for picking that out. We just add it to the comments because I, <laughs> what I'm enjoying about this is I'm learning as much from you guys um, from starting from starting the discussion, which I think is really, really cool. And I just like getting on here, talking about bikes, reading through the comments and the learning stuff from you guys. So yeah, head down in the comments and tell me what you think. Do you kind of agree? Do you think I'm well off? Are you still, are you still wanting <laughs> that rim brake experience? I like, personally, I'm done with it. The quicker we can move on, the better internal routine, like, I'm fine with it now, I've practiced enough mechanic that we can do it pretty quickly. It doesn't bother me in the slightest, whether it's internal or external, it's it's fine. You know, irritates me the most is probably free hubs and bottom brackets. And the quicker we can move on from that as well, oh, the better. Right, <laughs> I'm done, I promise. <laughs> right, um, get down in the comments and I'll see you all soon, cheers.